Um, Irene, thank you for those those thoughts. Uh, Anders, you've got your hand up. Yeah. Um, just since you invited comments about how we're we're feeling, um, I I have to say I feel a little bit uneasy if with the idea that the summary of the situation boils down to we're screwed and there's nothing we can do about it. Um, and and that's I not something I think that we can just well we might be able to say that and laugh at it and say that's just what it is but the only way we can laugh at it is if we're coming from a, a very protected place of privilege a lot of people are going to suffer from this and it's a it's quite a terrifying prospect um, I think and um, so I mean this is probably a theme I at least that I'm wrestling with and will be wrestling with for over, over the weekend. But um, it's, for me, it's about balancing an acknowledgement of the seriousness of the situation, the predicament, as you called it, but also thinking about, well, I mean, you've touched on it in terms of hope and where there are seeds that can grow um, that will be more positive. But I'm, I'm very wary that we, summarize the message, as I said, is we're screwed and there's nothing we can do about it. I think that will take people who hear that in a, in a, in a very negative direction in a lot of different ways. Thank you for that. Uh, Susan, go ahead. I was just trying to find them my thumbs up. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, oh. I, I, I agree with that, I guess is what I was trying to say. Um, it's really hard to hold the truth and the, um, the human heart at the same time. And I, and I think doing that for myself and then learning how to do that for others, for me, is, is a big part of this journey. And, um, so I, and I know <clears throat> It's kind of refreshing to have somebody just tell the truth and not, you know, not sugarcoat or um, avoid it. And we have nervous systems that can only handle so much. So it depends how much we expect people to be really listening and feeling as well. So anyway, I just appreciated what, what you said, Andrews. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. I think you both just touched on really kind of the pith of what we need to try to wade through over the course of this reunion. Andy, in the interest of the agenda, I'm going to hand it back to you. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, thanks, Bob. I'm going to just walk us through the uh, the agenda. Uh, kind of one of the principles we had kind of in mind with this this prequel session, we didn't want to assume that anybody had read anything. So we want to just make sure that it just may be the first time you've seen the actual agenda. So uh, one second here, I'm going to share my screen. And on my computer, I can't see anything but my agenda. I can't see any of you. So if you can just, someone can just shout out to say, yes, Andy, we can see what's on your screen. Yep, looks good. Okay, um, great. So this is the uh, the agenda, which you may have seen. Uh, this agenda is, is, is on Mighty Networks, and I believe Bob may have, have shared it via email as well. Uh, so we've laid out uh, both today, but more importantly, the four days of the, of the retreat. And um, you'll see that each day uh, has its own theme. And uh, so feeling gratitude for our strengths, facing the great unraveling, the great turning and going forth. And I should just give uh, you know, proper uh, accreditation to where the, these themes came from. It's our uh, kind of uh, certainly inspired by, if not taken from, uh, uh, the work that reconnects. So where their, their four stages in the cycle would be starting with gratitude, honoring our pain for the world, seeing with new eyes and going forth. And so that was really our starting point. And then we, we've kind of adapted um, 
the, uh, that language to, to our, our retreat. So what you'll see is a bunch of color coding. Uh, it's probably just simplest to go with that for now. So the anything in brown is uh, a, a, a meal break. So breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Um, anything in light blue, that's uh, the hosting team. That's uh, just kind of a heads up to the hosting team that we're, that we're meeting, uh, often while other things are happening. Anything in kind of that bright yellow is uh, kind of open, open time, social time, reflection time. Uh, you'll see we've, we've, we've built in a fair bit of that uh, into the agenda uh, where breaks are, are fairly long. They're, you know, at, at least uh, a half hour and up to, up to an hour and a half, depending on the day. Um, anything in kind of that pinkish color, at least on my screen, is the core group meetings. So you'll see at the end of each day, um, there are core group meetings. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain more what the core groups are later on in, in our discussion today. Uh, what have I left out? Do, 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 do. Uh, oh, the, the, the gray here. Um, uh, there'll be each morning on uh, day two and day three, so the 20th and the 21st, there will be concurrent uh, discussion sessions. So we'll, you know, it's our intent to have about six uh, concurrent discussion sessions happening on each morning. And then in the afternoon, we'll do a thing called a carousel activity where we'll shuffle people around. So you get, you get to um, uh, hear a bit at least about what happened in the, in the, the, session that, the sessions that you didn't attend. So you will, you'll pick one discussion group in each of the morning of Friday and Saturday. And then in the afternoon of each of those days, you'll, be, you'll have an opportunity to uh, rotate around and uh, get, a, uh, get some insight into what was discussed in the, uh, in the other discussion groups. I think that covers it. Oh, I think the other thing I'm missing is um, in the in the green. Very important um, is uh, we're starting every day um, with uh, a teaching, um, whether it be it may be a teaching or a conversation with um, uh, Elder Joe Michael, and he's also bringing a, a young Indigenous uh, uh, helper with him as well, um, who will be framing each of the days. Um, and relating uh, the, the, the general themes that we've, we've framed up to uh, making connections to uh, kind of the indigenous perspective, indigenous wisdom. So we really want to anchor um, each day uh, from that perspective. So that's why we we've, uh, have each day starting with that. So I think that, oh, and, the, and red, <laughs> the, I think this is actually the final one. Red is a public event. So we're, we're, we're doing a, a few different uh, public events throughout the, the, uh, the four days. So uh, you'll see uh, there's a, a photo being taken. With, there's a, an, uh, an installation on, on site, a Ukrainian egg installation that there's gonna be a photo taken. There's gonna be a, um, a discussion salon at the Pugwash High School on Friday. There's going to be a media scrum on day three, and there'll be a press conference on day four. Um, and I think that uh, that just about covers it. So that's the that's the agenda. Um, there is this kind of intended movement through these four themes, and overall uh, transition from kind of a place of kind of facing the reality of our situation. You know the. Uh, some would say the you know the, the grim nature of, the, of our current situation and moving uh, to transition very intentionally to how do we turn toward a new way of being um, in light of uh, and in response to uh, what the, the reality we find ourselves in. So I'm going to uh, just stop. Oh, hang on there. Andy, are you going to say like how much of this is online? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Susan. So um, uh, I meant to have the online agenda here to, sh to show, but I, I, I can just tell you uh, when you're looking at this one, if I have... Uh, I, my, Andy, my still... Andy yep. why don't I share my screen with... Yeah, the... sure. Um, yeah, you and... go ahead, Bob. All right, let me see. I'll find it here. Okay, we are. This is the online agenda. Um, so it basically just strips out that full agenda. It strips out the online portions. Everybody should have this. 
It's always the same Zoom link. Um, so we're right now um, on the one on the left, the prequel of Sunday, and then you can see day one, there's two sessions at the end of the day, 6.30 and 7.30 uh, for online folks, and then uh, days two, three, and four. Uh, there is a lunch um, on day four, Sunday, which is a plenary, so we'll be putting that on Zoom as well. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. You should have that. It's in Mighty's Networks, and you should have gotten it by email as well. Yeah. Uh, we have just a few minutes um, if, to see if anybody has any kind of questions about the agenda and anything they're not sure about. Um, yeah, John? Yeah, I mean, oh, honestly, yeah. I'm a freelance journalist, so I can't tell you when I'm available, when I'm not available, because things just happen. So I've noted all of the core times and everything. I've put myself down for online, but I can't guarantee how much of the time I'll be able to attend. And I wonder if that causes you a problem if you've set me up in a core group and I'm not able to attend. Yeah, no, and we'll, we'll uh, thank, thanks, Joan. Um, uh, I'm a little starstruck talking to you because I'm such a fan of your writing. Um, uh, yeah, we've, we've built the core groups, uh, a, a scale of the core groups is big enough that we can lose people um, and still have a critical mass of at least four people uh, in the core group. So I think we're, we're five to seven is the, it's the size of each core group. And, and so we recognize that there are people who will be have, to have, have, you know, legitimately have to, to, to bow out for one, one or more of the, of the sessions. Uh, Thank thanks, thanks, thanks. John Eaton, you had a question, and you're muted, John. You're muted, John. Uh, can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah. So I'm just wondering uh, if if I'm uh, four hours earlier than uh, than uh, Nova Scotia. Are some of these sessions uh, going to be recorded, or uh, can they only be watched live? Yeah, we are recording. Uh, Bob, uh, which which sessions are we recording? Uh, we are going to certainly record all the virtual sessions, and we were remiss recording the start of this one. Um, uh, but those will be recorded. Uh, the virtual sessions will be recorded. They'll be posted in Mighty Networks, um, possibly along with transcripts as well. Um, and the plenaries will be recorded. Yes, plenaries are going to be recorded. We can't uh, record individual breakouts. Um, some of the um, events we may not be able to fully record, the ones on site. Uh, particularly the public events. Um, we just didn't have the bandwidth to set up live streaming and, and recording, but we may be able to do some of that um, even on an informal basis and try to get it up. So we'll try to capture as much as we can. Yeah. yeah. And, and one thing that I can say safely, we will not be recording as the core groups uh, because we, we expect that the nature of the discussion in the core groups will be uh, you know, more personal, more sensitive that you wouldn't want those recorded. So, but the, so the, the plenaries and the discussion groups, hopefully uh, we can, um, can get those in. Any other questions about the agenda? Just to, as a matter of curiosity, just to show of, just ra raise your hand virtually if you are attending, attending, attending virtually. But, okay, just a few. Half-ish of this group. Um, I should say that um, in total, we have uh, actually 50 people registered for all or part of this retreat, and about 20 of them are in person, and 30 are are virtual. So it this is a uh, this is a hybrid event from from the word go. So um, uh, so we all, we're seeing a, a good cross section of the folks who will be participating. In the in the retreat later on this week, but this is only about 20, 20 of the fifty who will be participating in total. Uh, John, you have another? Oh, we're just people have raised hands because they are. Yeah, we're good. Okay, cool. Um, I think I'm going to hand off to you, Bob. Just keep things rolling.
Okay, um, we want to get into discussion topics, and you uh, saw on the agenda that uh, day two and three in the mornings, there's uh, first topics around the great unraveling, then the next day, topics around the great turning. Uh, 90 minutes each session. Uh, these are going to be concurrent breakout topics. We're hoping to uh, settle out with about six breakout topics on each of those days. Kind of problem definition for unraveling and a solution or a direction um, for the great turning. And so uh, again, going back six months, probably we were noodling around, around different ideas and we started to uh, kind of curate and post some of the topics um, in Mighty Networks. And you may have already looked at some of those. I'm gonna put uh, what those are uh, in the chat here. Um, on day one, um, uh, something that I was uh, hoping to facilitate, the human predicament, separating wishful thinking from reality, kind of along the lines of uh, the framing comments that I made. Uh, then another one, climate grief support, emotional and psychological resilience. I think that's a huge one. It's been a thread through most of the uh, uh, climate uh, gatherings that we've had. And then uh, the nuclear weapons threat. Uh, which Nancy has agreed to facilitate that. So each of these has a facilitator and the key operative here is to facilitate a breakout. You don't have to be an expert. You have to be passionate about the subject. Um, and so um, we've had some people step up like Liv to be able to do that. Uh, day two then, or day three actually, which is now the great turning uh, we have three that have been posted. Gregory Hemming um, is going to be virtual. He's agreed to do one on spirit, nature, and ecological uh, economics. Uh, Andy's going to be um, uh, kind of channeling uh, one of the authors uh, that's uh, been in the background of this whole thing that we've been reading, George Marshall, and how do you talk about this stuff um, uh, kind of as we go forth almost on the last day. And then Justin Cantafio can't make it today. He's one of the thinkers. He wanted to facilitate one on uh, food sovereignty and uh, local food security. So those that kind of gives you a, a flavor of the breakout topics. Um, and so we'd like your input. We're going to go through a little bit of a process here. You know, when your light bulb comes on, you want to do something, you want to see that something is talked about and you're willing to moderate or facilitate that 90 minute session, then we want you to put that into the chat box. And um, we'll give you a few minutes now. Um, and of course you could probably do this afterwards, you know, if sometime tomorrow a big light bulb comes on uh, and you're really passionate about a topic, you can let us know. Uh, but we're hoping to shake these down um, into the final uh, discussion topics for both the day two and day three. So it is an example, some of the, what we don't have in there is the role of art in communicating these crises. Um, that's something that could be talked about. Eco-diversity, uh, we don't have a lot in there. You know, ocean health, forest health, so on. Um, economic crisis and alternatives. What are new economic models? Um, I, Anders, that might be something you're interested in. Um, so uh, that's where, you know, think for a few minutes. If there's a topic related to this whole subject area, again, 90 minute breakout, it could be virtual could be on site, depending on where you're gonna be at that time. Um, and then we're going to put it into a survey um, and we're gonna like, we're gonna ask you to complete that survey even during this call so that we can begin to shake that down of uh, what are the potential topics. Um, So Reagan, I see you 
said you that you could talk about the role of art. Yeah. I would describe you as both an expert and someone who's passionate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I always shy away from the word expert because, you know, actually, uh, poster syndrome. <laughs> Um, but I also had, I had an idea too, and I put this in the form that we got the other day of potentially merging that with also any, um, any teachers that were trying to introduce that, in, like I have done in my work into their teaching at colleges or high schools or elementary schools and how they communicate um, resilience and understanding through art. So I could potentially talk about both the professional art and local art kind of thing and also how it's introduced into pedagogy. If anyone's interested in that, I'd be down. So um, which do you think would be better, day two or day three, un unraveling or turning? That sounds a little bit more like a turning. Yeah, I think probably turning. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like teaching the teachers. Would that be? I think that, or just, you know, asking questions of how people introduce this topic and communicate it with, I've been interested in how the, how the youth understands and grapples with this large, you know, multifaceted topic. And as a professor of art, um, I have, you know, I struggled in this last class where um, we were learning about the resilience and evolution and beauty. And we were looking at things under microscopes and it was at the botanic gardens. And um, in the middle of the class, it switched over into kind of understanding the other side, which is, you know, the detrimental aspects of what's happening in the world. And the day that we switched over um, that report on the AMOC shutting down came out and the, my students came into class and one of them was visibly upset. Um, another student had no idea what it meant and she's kind of on the spectrum and had this um, kind of emotional wall up already. And so it was interesting to kind of navigate that conversation and have it under this umbrella of the artwork that they were making for that course, which was um, using art and nature as a symbolic language to talk about bigger topics. And so some of the students kind of veered into being a little bit more serious about the symbolism and other students um, really just embrace the resilience of nature itself. Um, both of those aspects I found to be strengthening for them as, as individuals. And we had some really rich conversations about how we hold these two truths at the same time, because we can't just focus on how great everything is and how beautiful everything is. Um, it's important because that that builds the love and also holds that grief. But at the same time, we have to build resilience to, and realism to talk about what we're facing and what they're facing in particular without putting all of the burden on them. So um, I think that art is an incredible tool, whether it's with children or whether it's, you know, in the professional realm, like I had a show with um, Human Rights Watch. My work was featured in one of their um, uh, art fair booths. And then I've also worked with um, the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists. So I feel like art is, has this way of kind of reaching this wider audience and getting people to feel their emotions and build connections. So I don't know, is it too much of an amorphous amorphic thing should I pick one or the other well um, you're, gonna have, <laughs> you're gonna have 90 minutes to monitor a discussion yeah. around this and the first thing we're going to want from you is a title and a two-sentence description oh god okay <laughs> you can handle it I'm sure okay. okay um also just to keep moving on thank you for those thoughts and yeah that's the tricky part capturing that um uh, and then, um, uh, Phil, I see you put something in the chat about uh, farm conservation communities. Um, so we can add that into the survey. Um, exploring right yep. yeah, the coexistence um, of agriculture um, um, and community. So I think that's a big one right there. How do we bring... Uh, 
how do we bring agriculture back into people's daily lives? That's Bob, a, I see that Marion's got her hand up. I'm not sure she yes, has that. I, I, you were next. I'm. Please go ahead. Well, I I wanted to add to what Reagan said because uh, in the last few years, uh, I've come to realize more and more the importance of loving the planet or to care for it or tend it or be good stewards of it or even engage with it. And so uh, a few years ago, actually, it turned from it came, it was started off as a as a, a an in person gallery that you know, our environment network was going to sponsor, we got funding for, and ended up as an online gallery that still exists. So from time to time, we still raise that issue of, you know, the beauty of nature and how that can be so ins inspiring, engaging, how it can uh, actually change us so that we feel a sense of hope and we're able to um, take action as a result of that. So but, but my whole... I, I, it's be kind of become an obsession lately about how do we communicate, you know, that way and broadly uh, in a variety of ways. How do we communicate in ways that engage people, inspire them, motivate them? And so I had an incredible conversation the other day with a young man from Ottawa who is, works in communications with Kairos Canada. And he, he said that, uh, you know, we're, we need to pay a lot of attention to uh, the means and ways of being able to communicate the message so that we do um, get on board and help un help people understand, but then get them on board with what we need to do in order to make the changes necessary and in order to live the kind of life that we need to live so that we can be involve ourselves in the remediation opportunities that still might exist. Thank you, Mary. And um, so would this, what you were describing there, would that fit in with the kind of an art theme breakout topic best, or would you um, consider starting a different one? Well, um, the first part certainly can fit with, and, and uh, you know, it spills over into other things, but I there probably I expect there'll be opportunities of just talking about that in a more informal nature. Um, okay, sometime yeah. during the, the time we're together. Um, and Bob, I, I think what the way Marion just what she just described would would um, could fit within the topic that uh, I put forward, which I I just recently changed it from. Uh, talking about the great unraveling to engaging people in the great turning a, a, a little more it's a slight shift to that topic um but it sounds a lot like what one marion was describing was like how do you how do you draw people into that discussion and that's really um uh will be the the, the focus of, of the session that i proposed and i think it spills into some other aspects because you know a few years ago i it was a few years ago during a, a global climate strike I was asked to be the last speaker at uh, the strike. And so they told me that the reason they were asking me to be the last speaker was because I was a priest and I was supposed to be able to deliver a message of hope. And that they didn't want people to go to leave feeling um, disempowered. They wanted people to feel leaving them, you know, feel, leave feeling empowered. And so, that's part of that, but yes, Andy, you really, yeah, I think you captured it in in what you're proposing. Oh, you're muted, Bob. Joan, you've got your hand up. I do. Um, if I could guarantee that I were going to be there, I would love to suggest that somebody take on the whole question of media, speaking of how you get your message out and what what's happened to the media, right, is happening to the media as we speak and the misinformation and disinformation campaigns on social media now that we can't even get media articles on Facebook and Twitter has turned into a cesspool. But I can't guarantee I can do that. So I'm wondering if it could be fit into maybe, Andy, when you talk about engaging people and how to get the message out, that's a really big component of it. And I notice it all the time because I kind of lurk on all these activist groups and I read their discourse 
and they don't have seem to realize what's going on with the media how few journalists are actually are covering topics even in Nova Scotia and Canada so I'm just thinking that that could if there's any room for that in any of the discussions I think it would be really useful um that's sort of all I had to say yeah John, we could certainly yeah. Yeah, we could certainly do that John and that's what I'd like to suggest Joan is we book you in so to speak and then uh, if you can't make it we'll get a stand in for you how does that sound okay um I'll, I'll discuss it with you afterwards which day i think i can absolutely book and which day i can't because i've got a whole bunch of things coming up this week that i have to report on okay yeah no i think that's extremely timely topic actually Okay, any further thoughts? We've got six now um, all together for the great turning, three on uh, the unraveling. So we've added um, the role of art um, and how to communicate uh, these issues. We've added farm conservation communities and the role of media, um, information slash disinformation. And of course, it could go on quite a bit from there, Joan. So again, uh, if um, Phil and Joan, I'd like to ask a title and two sentences. And I know you're both very good at that. And, and we can wait on that after the, we don't need that right now, do we? Or Don't need it right now. <clears throat> okay andy did you want to do a short break um we, we are ready with the survey uh actually if you if you want to go straight to that Let but, but i'm just maybe people want a break but i mean we, we don't need to we, we're ready for the, the survey why if you we want just, why don't we just plow ahead if you need a um a break just go ahead um but we're going to Keep going here. Okay, I'm going to um, in the chat, everybody. I'm, I'm going to drop a link to a survey where you can indicate your preference around these topics, recognizing that you're going to we're going to you're going to pick one that you're going to go into Friday morning and one that you're going to go into Saturday morning uh, for the deep dive, and then in the afternoon you'll have a chance to hear from the others. But we we are looking to um, get a sense from you where your preference lies on those on those um, those two days. So I'm gonna drop the link to the survey right now in the chat and you can click on that link. And all we're looking to do is just go first choice, second choice, third choice for Friday and for Saturday. And we make sure you click submit. And also, if you're going to be primarily virtual or primarily on site. Yeah, that's actually, that's the first question, yeah. yeah. So this gives us an ability to start to fine tune the, uh, uh, the, the topics um, so that we're a little more prepped. We'll get a sense for... Um, kind of the popularity of each topic, so to speak. Uh, we may add a few between now and then, um, but at least uh, this will give us a good strong head start. Reagan, thanks for that description there. Does that work? Is that short enough? We'll just go the art direction, not the education one. We'll just pick that way. Okay, that's yeah. good. If you've responded to the survey and you need to take a like a, a quick bio break, um, 
now would be a good a good time to do it. We we can we'll we'll re reconvene uh, in a couple of minutes. Just give you that time to either take a break or or make your selections in the survey. See, we've got seven responses so far to the survey. So it's looking like climate grief is um, of strong interest to a lot of people on the first day. Yep. And the role of media. I think you struck a chord there, Joan. That's coming on strong for the second day. I'm just trying to type up my sentences for you. Bob, do you want to do a quick review of the, the survey results or do you want to just... Uh... Uh when you're ready. Sure. Um, last call, everyone. I think just about everybody's in. We're up to 14. 14, yeah. Okay. Um, so I tell you what, maybe the best way to do this is share my screen. Yeah, probably. Roll through it real quick. Um, and then, we'll, of course, we'll shake all this down afterwards. But um, here's the results. We can see that it's about 50-50 in-person and virtual uh, that's attending today, more like about 40-60. Um, 40 um, virtual, 60 on site. Um, so here's for the first day. Um, and you can see blue, red, yellow, first, second, third choice. Uh, so it's um, uh, the human predicament, um, pretty strong on um, uh, the first two, the nuclear weapons threat um, really, uh, I think, dropped off a bit. Um, how to describe that, I'm not sure. And uh, there's some comments in the chat that really we should ex be expanding that to war generally. Um, but of course, the nuclear threat might explain. I'm a grief has got a good strong support there as well. So I, we're gonna be doing all three of those. Um, then for the second day, um, again, for second, third floor, um, you can see that uh, the media uh, really came on strong at the far right side. Um, the, um, uh, and then uh, um, I'm trying to remember the titles of these. We've got local food, um, second. Oh, here it is, engaging people in the great turning. That's the work that Andy's going to do. Um, and then the first one is uh, seeking common ground, spirit, nature, and ecological economics. Um, so with six, we're going to talk about just doing all six. 
um, we may break those out into some virtual and some on site and we'll be back to everybody on how that's going to play out. Other thoughts, industry, interesting. Somebody said, uh, wondering if great unlav unraveling could be a plenary and a discussion. Um, and there could be two opportunities for atten attending a great turning workshop. Um, so we're going to explore that. Not quite sure how we can make that happen. Um, yeah. Well, and, everything's on the table, though. We can, we can. Uh... Yeah, that's right. Everything's on the table. Somebody mentioned impact of climate refugees. It was on our uh, discussions just even in the past few days. That's going to be a very significant phenomenon. It already is. It's only going to ramp up big time. I do wish that one of our thinkers, Scott Leckie down in Melbourne, is able to join us. I haven't been able to connect with him. Uh, he's right square in the middle of that issue globally um, of working with governments around the world on displaced persons. Yeah, critical issue. Yeah, so I'm not quite sure if we're going to be able to weave that one in in some way. Is, is anybody on the call it would would just having put that question out would anybody on, on the call be open to leading a, a discussion around uh around climate refugees because it is such a critical see nancy's got her hand up but not for this but I'm, we could say that nancy's volunteering <laughs> Nancy, go ahead. You got your hand up. Okay, I uh, would like to ask: Is there any way of having fewer concurrent sessions? Um, for instance, uh, the nuclear threat. I am with climate grief, and I, if I had my free choice, I would put number one as climate grief, and I suspect many people would as well. And um, I think uh, the nuclear threat is uh, incredibly important, but incredibly unpopular as well. Um, and I think it would be better if perhaps uh, uh, time could be taken from the carousel and have um, fewer concurrent sessions, if possible. I know it's hard. <laughs> yep. Yep. There'll, there'll be certainly will be discussions after this call, Nancy, about uh, kind of taking what we've got from today and making sure it works. But our, our, our goal will certainly be to make it make make those these four days as useful as we possibly can. So, um, and I should say that just with around discussion topics, it's it's quite possible that on the drive to Pugwash, you get a, an inspiration about a topic that is absolutely critical, and we would absolutely want you to come forward with that um, uh, when you arrive. And we'll, you know, if and depending on what it is and and how how passionate you are, we can see what working that in. So this is our first, our, our actually probably our second, our second attempt at, at inviting your input on topics. But um, we don't want to rule things out. Um, this is such a unique opportunity. You want to, if something really, really good comes up for you, you want to lead a, a topic that's not been discussed yet. We can certainly see about how we can integrate that. Okay. Shall we carry on? Oh, let's carry on. Okay. So um, we're gonna we're gonna move into the the uh, I think it's the last ish. Yep, the last on a formal part of today's discussion, and it's about the we've been referencing these things called core groups. And um, so for for this retreat, we're going to be organizing the thinkers into small what we're calling core groups of so five to seven people. Uh, who will meet uh, consistently at the end of each day to share their, their personal insights and feelings around the theme of the day um, and probably whatever else is coming up for them as well. Um, and, and your core group will be a place, and this will happen both virtually and in person, um, but they will be the same people. So you'll be getting together with the same group of people at four different times at the end of each day. Uh, there'll be a place to meet uh, with a consistent group of colleagues, and it's a safe space to work through what might be what be kind of challenging thoughts and emotions that come up the, earlier in the day. And we really want to create space for um, kind of those heart discussions um, and and 
so the core groups are intended to, to provide that space. So we'll be providing you a, a set of guiding questions and optional activities, you know, a cheat sheet, as it were, for the core group meetings that you, you can use at your option uh, and keep an eye out for that in the coming days. Um, so getting the right people in your core group will be really important. Um, we know that the kind of chemistry will be important. Uh, and we, we're, we're doing our very best or have done our very best to organize you into core groups. And we've kind of solicited some input from you about um, if you have any preference about who you'd like to have in your core group. Um, and uh, we will uh, actually I'll just kind of show that right now. Just one second, I'll share my screen so you can see right now the who's, uh, I'll share my screen. So uh, you'll see on the uh, on the left hand side in the gray, um, we have uh, three core groups set up. So each of I think of seven people. Um, so you'll see who we've and again it's, this is based upon uh, input you've already provided and our understanding of who's coming to try to put uh, people into uh, meaningful groups. And on the on the right side in the in the uh, Kind of pinkish color. We've got the virtual core groups, and there are actually more of them than there are. There are actually five core groups, virtual core groups, um, and three on-site core groups. And so, um, and Bob, has, has this list been shared with folks already? It, it has, and I just put the link in the chat. Okay. Okay. Great. So you can see again um, where your name is, and and. Um, you know, it was it was our intent today. Um, I'll stop sharing because you've all got that link. Um, it was our intent today, if we had enough folks to do um, your actual core group, uh, to give you an opportunity to to actually meet your core group members. Now we don't have have everybody here, so we can't actually do that. Um, what we can do is give you the taste of a core group. By um, we've we've got preset uh, three different breakouts uh, right now, and just to in in very much in the spirit of what the core groups will be like over the four days of the retreat, give you an opportunity right now to to talk about how you're feeling about uh, the discussion so far and what your intentions are coming to uh, to the Thinkers Lodge th this time around. So uh, we're going to put you in uh, in a breakout group. These and these are not your core groups. These are just kind of randomly pulled together core groups that we've based upon the folks that we have on the call today. But the idea is that for um, we're going to set it for 12 minutes, and you're just going to go around around your small breakout and just say, you know, here's what's coming up for me. Oh, Bob, yeah, yeah. Let me jump in before we go into the core groups and. Um... I do want to say something about how did we pick these core groups? Oh, yeah. And my first comment, it was not easy, um, very difficult. And it kind of fell to me because I know most all of you um, and the rest of the crowd. So there's a big crowd. We don't know um, how many um, sessions any one person is going to be able to attend. Um, but um, it was really fell to me to try to compose the different core groups. And one of the only sources of guidance I had was we sent out a survey where you could pick other people that you would like to see in your core group. So we tried to stick to that as much as people uh, as much as possible. I think only seven people responded to that. So it's um, a little bit uh, core groups are chosen slightly aligned with backgrounds, but then mixing it up a little bit so that you get some of the other people in the room that you might not normally interact with. So I was looking at age, I was looking at gender, I was looking at kind of what is their uh, professional background or their affiliation um, and just composing what looked like might be good groups. Having said that, these are not fixed in any way, shape, or form. Totally malleable, just like Andy and I are going to try to incorporate some of the suggestions around the agenda. So don't hesitate. If there's really somebody that you'd like to be able to share a core group with uh, that you see on the list, 
please let me know and we're going to be moving these around but we do want to settle in uh probably by thursday evening so that there is some consistency um and you can really get to know some people and really be able to share some feelings with others in a more intimate way mm -hmm. so that's all i wanted to say about how these came about and i have to say up until 45 minutes before this call it was still shifting around and it probably will continue to do so yeah. thanks Bob. so um we're going to we're going to roll into a breakout which will given the timing of of, of, of the placement of it of, in, in today's session will effectively almost be your checkout from from the day but but and the question of, that I'd like for you to or questions I'd like for you to 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 consider in your breakout is okay what what's coming up what emotions are coming up for you uh, based on the discussion that we've had so far and what's your intention uh, going into uh, into the retreat so we'll look for everybody to share the, their answer to those one or both of those questions um and we're going to set the uh set the the timer uh terry to uh let's say 12 minutes and uh unless there's anybody who's got a hot burning question before we do that i'm gonna we're gonna set you off anybody got a question uh, no all good okay all right so terry whenever you're ready you can Drop people and into these kind of a facsimile of what will be your core group when we when we start in the later this week. There we go. So it's back to us chickens. <laughs> oh, Little McPherson just joined us. Pearson just showed up. Well, better late than never. <laughs> Would you like me to just put them in a room or? Sure. Uh, well, let, let's say hello. To All right. <laughs> Lil, you there? Yes, I am. Sorry, late. Just pulled in to the firm. <laughs> okay, so glad you could join in. <laughs> Can you At least I get a little bit. I'll get a little bit anyway. Okay, you know, I still remember those glyphosate-free scones you served us one time. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That, huh. That's right. I I could do that again. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, we're well through the agenda. And yeah. what's happening right now is there's small breakouts. Um, people for about 12 minutes, there's probably only about 10 minutes left. Mm -hmm. uh, we could plug you into one of those. Uh, they're basically digesting what we've talked about so far. We did a little bit of framing exercise, how we're really talking about overshoot. Mm -hmm. uh, in one word, I think you know what that's all about, as opposed to climate crisis. Mm -hmm. You know, much bigger predicament. <clears throat> um, and we did a round to come up with discussion topics for breakout sessions on the Friday and Saturday. And we sent out a survey for that. Um, and um, you're on your phone, are you? No, nope, I'm on my computer. Okay, I think what we can do is send you the link since you joined late, you wouldn't see the chat box. So right. we can send you the link to the uh, discussion topics and you'll be able to yeah. see. Those. I'll do that right now, Bob. Yeah, that'd be great. And people have an opportunity to uh, suggest other topics. So Joan Baxter's on. Uh, she suggested one on media um, and the whole issues of media communication these days. Um, mm -hmm. as a breakout. Uh, <laughs> so that looks like it's uh, really struck a nerve. So, yeah. and there's- uh, Lil, I, I just, I dropped a link, Lil, in the uh, in the chat, if you wanna, if you wanna indicate your preferences there. And you'll okay. see a couple of them around food security. Uh, Phil Ferraro, who you know, is gonna do one on 
kind of integrating agriculture with community. Mm -hmm. It was all kind of way forward, a great turning uh, type of stuff, that one. Yeah, love that. Yeah. So, you know, if a light bulb turns on and you, uh, the, the operative is you don't have to be an expert. You just have to be passionate about a particular topic. Feel free to suggest one. Okay. Well, I know there's a chat for food security. Yes. That would be my, that's my baby right there. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm looking for, I'm going to be facilitate. No, uh, Justin can facilitate that one. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if you'd like, we can plug you into a breakout group for maybe another nine minutes or so. Sure. At least I can listen anyway. Absolutely. All right. Thank great. you. <laughs> uh, okay. You should see an invite to a room right now. Perfect. Hey. Oh, Terry, you are so awesome. <laughs> I just want you following me around through my entire day. <laughs> I love it. It's an ADHD <laughs> superpower. <laughs> well, you know, 20, 21, 22 people online, not bad, I suppose. Nope. Sunday nope. afternoon. I mean, it, it's, and it's, you know, it's a sunny ish Sunday afternoon. It's a pretty premium. Oh, yeah. Big ask, yeah. you know particularly because it's supposed to rain for the next two days. Yeah. Yeah. And I managed to get into my beehive before the rain came uh, to check on the queen. We introduced a new queen three days ago and uh, they've taken her in, accepted her. She's got her now new entourage following her around. And so all is good in the beehive. What, what's her name? Uh, she's, got a yellow, she's got a yellow dot on her back, so maybe we'll have to come up with something yellowish for a name. Yeah. <laughs> or Dotty. 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 <laughs> what, what did you guys think about Nancy's uh, interest in more opportunity for climate grief in, in terms of a cross? Is that, how did you hear that query? Um, or competing she was, she was about, she was talking about topical overlap. Was it Nancy? Yeah. yeah. But also about more, it sounded like, <clears throat> I, I didn't know whether she was asking for more, more um, thematic continuity over the days in the grief space versus it being more pocketed in a day. And I, I was, yeah, just, I was yeah. puzzled that. Um, yeah, well, I, I, I think the, the, the core groups certainly are the space to explore that. Mm -hmm. I mean, so there is that baked into every day. Um, you know, she was also suggesting, or, or I, I think she's suggesting that, you know, uh, as an alternative to the carousel, like just doing another, mm -hmm. like, just, like, uh, and, and, you know, that's, you know, frankly, it's easier to, easier to run the discussion groups again uh, in the afternoon than, than to do the carousel, but carousel is a little, a little more co complicated, but um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I would, mm. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know that she was asking for that. Yeah. But uh, it, but she, it, yeah. What was your read, Bob? Um, I know it's a big topic just by how it scored on the survey. Um, but yeah, I I'm looking at her comment in the chat, and I'm not quite sure. Um, Maybe a follow up conversation with her or something. Yeah. It, it does seem like the way you've structured it thematically, there's lots of ways for it to find its place and to keep, yeah. Um, yeah. keep coming back in. So that may that may not be evident to her at first blush, but it does seem that there's there's a good bit of room. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, w one thing, Bob, we, we don't have on the agenda today, but uh, I want to put the offer out to people is if you play an instrument, please bring it with you to uh, to the retreat. Yes. Yes. I'll make a note for closing comments. I want to believe that Phil Ferraro does spoken word. Like he could do yeah. like Leonard Cohen or something. <laughs> that voice he's got, man, it's like made for radio. Yeah, I don't. 
he's going to actually be there on Saturday night. That's part of the problem. And yeah. another question, question I wondered while while um uh, while Reagan was was describing and speaking so well, um, whether whether when you're you, how much you're asking people when they're leading groups to in more of a sense prepare a series of questions based on their expertise, as opposed to like how how they're going to balance ninety minutes of their expertise, which she's got so much and so much to share and talk about, versus whether she was keying in on framing questions to draw people into what she thinks are the most difficult areas of her area of expertise. What, what are the most difficult aspects? Um, yeah, I mean, we, we, we could provide, you know, guiding questions for all of them. I do want to hold, uh, or at least very least an email, but um, I was hoping to do a Zoom session, but it might not be time enough, but at least an email to all the facilitators. Yeah, it's a big, great um, idea, Bob. Some sort of suggestion on how to moderate a session. So yeah. uh, to have questions prepared um, that they could pose or not, depending on the tempo of the discussion. Uh, then the usual facilitation stuff, if somebody's hogging the space, to try to politely dial them down and, and draw out others that are just listening, you know, that type of thing um yeah yeah so i will include that in a uh, facilitator's email about having some questions but what in their area of, of passion what is most confounding to them most challenging and how to in how do they frame that with their expertise Yeah. Which really, I thought, yeah, it was with Anderson and Susan's earlier comments seemed really well. They really captured that really well. Just the, just the confounding struggle of how to go into this and not pitch over the rails or. And you know this they really nailed it right at the beginning, I think. Um, this is the toughest nut to crack, even for these thinkers, of how really deep is the predicament. Um, and it came up a couple of other times that people want to end with hope that everything will be okay. Mm -hmm. um, um, and if you're just left with things aren't going to be okay, then what are you going to do? How do you how do you work your way through that? How do you get to the other side? Yeah, and then Paul's working on it. Paul Kingsnorth, a whole lot of people. Of how do you come out the? How do you work? How do you go through it and come out the other side? Yeah, that's the toughest nut. I think we're going to be trying it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I I think it's 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 fair to say to people that that what we're going through will you know. What, where we will be at the, on the other side of what's happening will be fundamentally different than what we have today, just as today is fundamentally different than what we had 50 years ago. Like we have half of half of species are gone, yeah. like from the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. So um, without saying we're screwed, you can say that it's going to be different. Um, an industrial growth society will pro is probably screwed. I mean, do you think, you know, do you think Joe Michael might, want or or collaborate around kind of anticipating each day that he's speaking yep. you know that he's intercepting non-indigenous culture and this problem of yep. hope yeah. and moving yeah. forward and uh yeah the, like that could be if that was a debate forum or a conversation forum with him also in, in the in a plenary kind of way you know because everyone's there yeah um, the problem of the problem of grief from the through indigenous eyes through through, through the indigenous perspective. Yeah, yeah. We we had discussions, I think, with with Joe, uh, I think, about how uh, the, the the importance of acknowledging that indigenous people have lived through yeah uh, an apocalypse and and are still here. 
and have a rich culture, um, as traumatic as it was. All right, we're coming. It, it is. Okay. Unbelievable. We're actually on time, Bob. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, how all that works out. You know, the best, the best lady. Duly noted. All that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, Lil joined us. Uh, good to see you, Lil. Glad you could join in. Um, hope you can get to Pugwash. Uh, I plan on it. Some of all of this. That's great. Um, very good. Um, so we've got 10 minutes left, and um, I think this is open. Let's have some conversation. You know, we led off with that framing document. We were talking while people were in breakout about, uh, I think, what Anders and Susan said, that this is really tough topic to really understand fully in your kind of in your marrow, in the core of your being, kind of let it sink in, the, the full scale of the predicament. Um, and how do we go through that? How do we come out the other side? Um, and what does that look like? Personally, emotionally, psychologically. Um, and then what do we do? Um, so there's a lot more and more being written about it. There's stuff coming out almost weekly now about really grasping the full uh, context of the predicament. Um, and then how do we work our way through that? So that's what we're hoping to really sink into, I think. Things I think, Andy, as you were just saying, things are going to look dramatically different, just like you compare 50 years ago to the way they look today. Um, and that's part of the great turning is what is it going to look like? What seeds are going to sprout and grow? What conversely, not just which seeds sprout and grow, but which systems uh, begin to unravel and collapse? Um, Susan, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I just wanted to say in our, in our little group, Irene shared, um, a communication from Israel, from family, and some of the tragedies happening there. And it just really drove home uh, for us, I think, the privilege that we have to be in a part of the world where we can have these kinds of conversations and the responsibility that comes with that. And I don't know, I just, I don't think anybody can completely hold this all the time. Um, but I do feel that sense of responsibility of the more I learn how to be in it uh, with both truth and love and presence, um, the more I, I can create spaces for other people uh, to, to find their way as well. And then we all find our gifts. That was another theme in our group. And, um, so I, and I see this group as as kind of pioneers in this, or or kind of at the edge, you know, of this privileged edge, this bravery edge, and so I I think what's learned and what's kind of um, built or connected here is is really important as an expression of our responsibility. Well, I'm happy to be here. I know I just come in the very last. Nobody say anything, so I figured I'd shoot in here. Uh, and thank you for letting me in at this this last moment. And but I I am here for food, and I I I am a, I'm really concerned about Nova Scotia in the future and food. That's my that's my main bag, and I'm going to really be as loud as possible with all you, especially especially in the, you know watching the, the the Gaza Strip and the whole situation and the COVID and everything. People get cut off from food immediately, and it's a, and it's a, and it's an emergency. So, 
we could be in that situation and we kind of are already very vulnerable. So I think, yeah, I'm going to be really loud with you all about the situation we're in in Nova Scotia, what would happen to us and et cetera. Good. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, good. We'll be chatting, Matthew. Yeah, there's a strong, uh, dare I call it, foodie theme that's going to weave through this. Um, so there'll be a number of others on that topic, which is critical. And Irene, I just reading some of the headlines this morning, it really sunk in to my heart in Gaza when they're cutting off food and water uh, for that many people. Um how severe that is. I think just based on our conversation in our group, I'm already seeing the broad spectrum of like how intense and hard everything is and also how to build resilience and hope it's already like even in that five or 10 minutes that we had together, I see it already as part of the conversation. So I felt my intention in this is um, to build my own resilience and ability to hold, hold this and like learn as much as I can from as many different people as I can. So I'm really grateful that this is happening right now. Yeah. I have a nuts and bolts question. Again, about media, sorry to be one trick pony here. Um, you said that you think you're going to be on CBC on Wednesday? Yes, definitely. And I see you, you've also got a media scrum planned and then a press conference. Do you have a lot of interest shown up from what's left of the media in Nova Scotia? And can you get any media from further away than that? I love how you describe it, Joan, what's left of the media. Yeah, there's precious little actually. Um, all that I, all that I managed to get the attention of uh, Rose Murphy. Um, found out about it. She contacted me. Uh, she was hoping to do a 25 minute um, radio documentary on it, um, but the the Oppenheimer thing kind of came and went. It wasn't on topic anymore. Um, and so uh, she managed, she's now with Main Street, so she's managed to get me an interview with Jeff Douglas for seven minutes sometime Wednesday, and I don't know the time. Yet. So we're going to tell everybody about this and tell them to come to the three public events. The high school one I should mention to everyone is going to be particularly interesting. I wish I could, uh, we could somehow record it. Uh, this is the entire student body at the Pugwash District High School, 200 students. Uh, some of the thinkers are going to be going there for an interactive discussion salon with the students. They're going to be prepped with questions uh, that they're going to have when they come. And um, at the end of the event, which is a little less than 90 minutes long, the principal, Sean Brunt, is going to make an, uh, an announcement that the Pugwash High School is the first high school in Canada to declare themselves a nuclear weapon-free zone. And so then that is a media release that's going to go out to Canada Pugwash Group, which goes out on their listserv to 38 national Pugwash groups around the world. So that's a big one because they're not just any high school, they're the Pugwash High School as part of the Pugwash International Movement. Any last thoughts? We've got a few minutes left here. Well, that last question, Bob, about the, uh, if you have an instrument. Oh, yes. Um, if you're gonna be at the lodge on Saturday evening, um, we're gonna have some invited guests show up for dinner. Uh, I know the local municipal counselor, probably a number of others are going to be there, the principal uh, from the school and his wife and so on. Um, but after that, we're going to have a social time, be an open mic. Um, 
And uh, Phil, I understand with your deep radio voice, you might be a spoken word artist. I'm just planting the seed there, Phil. So we're going to have an open mic. But even more than that, anybody that has a musical instrument and is willing to do the entertaining, um, feel free to bring your music with you. Um, and I think we're going to have quite an interesting uh, and good time on the evening there on Saturday. So Nancy's got her. Nancy, do you have your hand up for a comment or? Uh, I yes, I did. I get, think our little group talked a lot about media, about disinformation and misinformation, and um, well, we have Joan here. It'd be very nice to know from her how can we support you people in the media to be continued i think <laughs> well, that's definitely an ongoing conversation and joan i did do a whole write-up on the whole fifth generation information warfare that we're into now in the piece that i posted in the chat box uh if you could have a look at that and offer any comments that we can Okay, here's a really stupid question. Once we close this Zoom meeting, how do I find everything that was in the chat box? So you can, and everybody should do this right now, save the chat box. Oh. Okay, you can do that. Uh, I think, how do you do it? You go to your yeah. participant list. Well, and we've got a, the, the, the chat will be recorded. Um, so we can, we could at the very least send uh, uh, the text file out to everybody. If, if you're not able to find it yourself, we can, uh, we're recording this call. So uh, the, the chat is being recorded. Uh, so we, we can share the text file of the, of the chat. And um, Terry, how do you save for each individual the chat file? I just started a note in the chat, but if you go to your chat and down, there's three dots that say more. And then when you open that up, there's an option to save chat. Perfect. Okay. I don't see that. Sorry. Yeah, it's not on every platform, I don't think. Yeah. Is, is there any way you could just send the links to us? Yeah. Everybody that, 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 that I think would be easy. Right, by email? By email. Yeah. I think we can do that. Good old email. Oops. <laughs> Oops, I keep going. I keep doing this. Hard to think of it that way, but they now talk about old fashioned email. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That could be a bre whole breakout topic in itself. <laughs> and the scourge of social media. Yeah. Don't get me going. <laughs> artificial intelligence and deep fakes <laughs> oh yeah it's a it's definitely a, a growing rabbit hole let's put it that way yeah just see we're just after 4 p.m now we may want to all right should we call it a i think so all right so we're looking forward to seeing everybody on thursday Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Very nice Bye. that we could get together. Thanks See a lot. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Have a good one. Bye. 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 See, you. Um, See you soon. Bye, Janice Lil. Brooks and Bob, Bye. can stay Bye. 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 There we go. Well, Terry, thank you. That was fantastic. Yeah, nice job. No problem at all. And the whole time I'm being teased by whatever my husband's cooking downstairs, which smells delicious. <laughs> Good man. There we go. Uh, yeah.
did you need me to stay for anything? Because I can. If not, I need to make one of you guys a host if you guys want to work on any details. You just make me the host, Terry. We'll... Okay. You have Thanks, the Terry. power now. Take care. Yeah. Thank Bye. you. Bye. I've worked with Terry now for about uh, five years on and off, and she's just a delight to work with. So, Andy, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I think I think it's, I, th I think there's um, you know we we you know we create an agenda which is an you know our best approximation of how we think we can engage the folks, and then we meet these folks and we go, huh, there might be other ways to do this, right? And and I, I'm n not suggesting that we kind of go back to you know, change, make any fundamental changes, but I think there will be opportunity, there's an opportunity to just consider based upon the discussions we had today,